So we've seen that the differential equation dy on dx equals kx gives rise to the equation that describes exponential growth. So y equals a by e to the positive kx describes exponential growth. Well, what if we were to turn the coefficient in front of this y here on the right hand side, this k, into a negative, so we have negative k instead of positive k. So if we work through the solution and separate the variables, dy on y equals negative k by dx. So in case you haven't seen the previous videos, we simply move all the y's to the left hand side and move all the x's to the right hand side. And then we integrate both sides. Working these integrals through, we'll eventually come to the solution y equals a by e to the negative kx. So this is an equation here that describes exponential decay. So we have e to the positive kx modeling exponential growth and e to the negative kx modeling exponential decay. All right, so what does this mean physically? Well, this is what the family of solutions y equals a by e to the negative kx looks like for several values of k. Actually, in all of these examples, we have a equals 3, the coefficient in the front. So the equation is 3 by e to the negative kx. This olive curve here is when k equals 1 quarter. The magenta curve is when k equals 1 half. This cyan curve here is when k equals 1. The orange curve, k equals 2. And the blue curve is for k equals 4. So k describes the rate of decay. So it's the decay constant. And as we can see, the larger the decay constant, the quicker the rate of decay. So physically, these might represent something like radioactive decay. And we can use the equation to see if radiation levels are safe from the time of, for example, a nuclear accident to be able to enter an area without being harmed. They might represent the charge remaining in a capacitor or a battery as it's being discharged, or perhaps the temperature of an object as it's being cooled by, say, for example, forced convection. So there are many physical processes that can be described by exponential decay. Uh, let's do an example then. Let's do an example of radioactive decay. All right, now half-life is commonly used to describe the rate of radioactive decay. And what it simply means is how long it takes for the radioactive element to decay to half of its original amount. Okay, so let's set up this differential equation. Let's let m, big M, equal the mass of the radioactive element at time t. So m will be a function of t. So the differential equation will simply be dm on dt equals negative k times m. So this is the differential equation we'll solve to model this phenomena, this phenomenon, I should say, of exponential decay. And if we work through as always, we should get the general solution of m of t equals a by e to the negative k t. Now A is always equal to the initial amount, or the amount that we start off with, which is 12 milligrams. For now, I'm going to leave it in symbol form. Let's uh, let M0, so M initial, equal A, which will numerically equal 12 milligrams. So I'll rewrite the equation as M of T equals M sub 0 E to the negative KT. To work out the decay constant K, we simply consider the half-life that we're given, which is four hours. So what this means is then when t equals four, at four hours, the mass that's remaining is equal to a half of m0. Okay, so the mass of the radioactive element remaining at four hours equals a half of m0. And that's of course equal to m0 times e to the negative k by 4. So if we just consider this then, we've got an m0 on the left and an m0 on the right and these will cancel. So that implies a half equals 
e to the negative 4k. Take the log of both sides. Natural log and the e cancel out. So we have negative 4k equals log of a half. Now the natural log of a half, if we simply follow our logarithmic laws, is negative the natural log of 2. So we have a negative on the left and a negative on the right, and these cancel, giving us k then is equal to log of 2 divided by 4. And you'll find then this is generally how we work out k given a half-life. k is simply equal to the natural log of 2 divided by lambda, where lambda equals half-life. Okay, so the log of 2 over 4 is about 0 0.173. So putting that back into our solution, we've got m of t equals m0 by e to the negative 0 0.173 t, where t is in hours. Now we said m0 was equal to 12 milligrams. So really our function is m of t equals 12 by e to the negative 0 0.173. 73 by t. So we're asked then the amount that's remaining at uh, 4 p.m. So we started with 12 at 10 a.m. So from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. Well, that's equal to six hours. So what's the mass remaining at six hours? So we've got m of six equals 12 by e to the negative 0 0.173 by six, and that's equal to about 4.24 milligrams. Okay, so that's a quick example on exponential decay. I will do one more in the next video. If you have found this video to be helpful, please give me a like. And please subscribe for more videos that may help you with your studies. If you have a question, please feel free to ask in the comments below. And I'd appreciate any small tip you can give. So remember, helping me helps you, so how to do that will be in the description below. But until next time, best of luck with your studies, and thanks for watching.